I'm not sure if the other members are joining. Okay. Good evening, everybody. This is at 6.01 p.m. This is the West University Historic Zone Advisory Board, <clears throat> Wednesday, 16th, 2024. Um, let's go ahead and uh, get right to the agenda and do this call to order, and we'll do a quick roll call. Uh, Jim Glock. Present. David Turner. Demons here. Okay, Rick McDonald present. We have a quorum. Um, we have a guest of Louis Becknagle and Don uh, Lichty, who's going to be presenting uh, for item number four, and Jody Brown from the city of Tucson. Uh, and again, I'm going to be doing secretary duty tonight, so I apologize if I kind of look down at my paper and be quiet for a second while I'm picking some notes. <clears throat> All right. Um, approval of minutes. Remind me again. So, Jim, uh, did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes that's on the board? Yeah. Any issues yes. with the minutes? No. I think we don't need to do a approval. Is that correct, Jim? No, you need to do approval. Oh, that's right. Sorry. I think in this particular case, we do. So, let's do an approval, roll call. Uh, well, no, uh, somebody motion to approve. Also move to approve the minutes okay. as presented. And Damon second. Discussion, no. Uh, all in favor, aye. Aye. Aye, aye. Jim, raise your hand or something. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Minutes approved. <clears throat> All right, call to the audience. Uh, Jody, any call to the audience items? We did not receive any call to the audience. All right, no call. Well, that brings us to the meat of the meeting. Um, item number four on the agenda, uh, SD 0324-00026-924 North 6th Avenue. So Don, I assume you're speaking to this tonight? That's correct. All right, over to you. Okay, my name is Don Lickby, and um, uh, this proposal is for a project at 924 North 6th Avenue. Um, something funny just happened to my computer. Okay, um, and I assume all of you live in that neighborhood, and if you go up and down the street uh, on 6th Avenue between 1st and 2nd, you see a lot of houses, you will not see this house. This house actually sits on the back side of the property, and so it is actually right next to the alley on the east uh, side, east of uh, 6th Avenue. I think that's called Arizona Avenue. The house itself was built in 1915. Um, there was an upgrade to the attic area, we believe around 2008, but I've never seen any really uh, specific proof of that just one place it said 2008 and an upgrade. So what I, we're doing, I, I'm sorry? I witnessed the improvements. Oh, okay. Was 2008 about right? It is. Uh, okay. Corky Poster was your architect. Um, oh. And okay. I'm sure he went through historic review at the time and all was blessed and copacetic. And it's sorry that you can't get the plans of the work from the archives because yeah. I'm sure they're there somewhere. Yeah, okay, great. So what we're proposing here is a window replacement. This is a three-story uh, building. It's, it's a large home. Uh, there are 44 windows in total. Um, uh, there are major problems with windows that were put in in 1915. Um, and they are, uh, they're all single pane. Many of them do not open and close. Either they're painted shut or else they're stuck. Uh, only a few of them have screens. So it's uh, you can open a window, but you can't open all of them by any means unless you want everything uh, coming in. Uh, there are a couple that are broken uh, that we have uh, not even attempted to repair yet, just with you know, cracks. Um, there are gaps. Uh, there's various ways that the previous owner has tried to seal these gaps. And so there's some uh, sort of black foam in 
couple of them and, and various other things just to seal up some of the gaps. Not, um, not that that looks terrible unless you're close to one of them that's that way. Uh, they're very energy inefficient, obviously, uh, being single pane. So what we are proposing is that we would replace uh, these windows with new windows. When I first started working on this and thinking about it, uh, our, I thought we'll have to tear the whole window out and start over. Uh, but in talking with many, many uh, people who are uh, more skilled at this type of thing than what I am, uh, what we would do in this case is we would replace these windows with a, basically a window insert. So the current window would slide out, take the, the trim off on the inside, slide out the current window, and the new window would slide right into that. There would be no impact on the trim on any of the outside, the outside of any of the windows. The outside would look identical. You can see on a picture like this that there's the white trim around that would stay. Right, exactly. And instead, it would just be the insert, uh, the old window pulled out, a new one uh, put in. So the original jams, original trim, they stay the same. Uh, viewing it from the outside, you would not, you hardly would be able to tell if there's a different window in there. Although, obviously, if you look really closely, you'd see it's a, a you know, a nicer window than what the, the old ones are. The windows that we're proposing are uh, manufactured by Pella. Uh, they are single hung, they're white, and they're made of a comp uh, composite material. I know that there has been uh, pretty strong suggestions for wood, but there's some reasons that we are uh, proposing that we would go to this composite material instead. Um, the composite material, it, it, it's strong, it's durable, it has, it doesn't warp over time, it doesn't sag, uh, it essentially requires no maintenance, uh, it's, it's impervious to weather. Uh, I was told that that composite material expands and contracts at the same rate as glass, so over time there wouldn't be any separation, anything related to that kind of thing. They can be painted. They, the outside finish is supposed to last for 20 to 30 years, but if, if absolutely necessary, they could be uh, painted. And they're, they're very strong. They're, they're a strong, solid uh, material. Um, so that's basically, uh, there, there's a good example right there of what they would, what they would look like. Uh, these pictures all, now that's, that's one of a black one. And obviously we would not put in black. All of these are white. Um, um, and, uh, you know, what we're proposing is that we would, yes, be able to just replace these four to four windows. Um, I don't know whatever other level of detail you want, but instead of me just continuing to talk, it may be better if I would just answer questions you have about the windows of the project or what we're doing there. <clears throat> Okay. All the windows that you're looking at, double hung windows, if they were in the original. 19, yes, they are 19, double hung. 50. That's correct. And we could put in double hung instead of single hung. And so, I'd be glad to do that if that's necessary. I guess our feeling is that there's not a big advantage to uh, having a double hung window. And, um, and um, you know, just the necessity of doing that kind of thing. So. Yeah, I would I would be glad to switch to double hung if that's absolutely required. But right now, that they would be identical to this except for a double hung if that's required. Okay, so my next question, if I could, uh, please. Um, are you anticipating uh, using refrigeration to cool the home, mini splits, or are you thinking of using swamp cooling? No, no swamp cooling. The... Uh, Roof is such, I guess back many years ago, there must have been a swamp cooler on the roof, uh, but that was taken out. There are many, a couple mini splits there. That's the type I, of uh, refrigeration we're trying to go to. I have the swamp cooler that was on the roof, so. Oh, do you? Yeah, it's cooling my shed. <laughs> the reason I asked that question is that it's doubtful that windows will be opened or closed all that often. Um. And I happen to have uh, 
installed window sills or window panes within the existing window frames. And it's not Pella, it's uh, J-Win, J-Win? Jelbwin. Jelbwin, and, yeah. and you can get the sashes up and bottom and new sliders and they're wood, uh, granted. Um, and I understand the desire to not have to uh, address the maintenance of wood over time. But I'm thinking that would be even less disturbance to the uh, existing structure than the inserts. Although I understand, and I'll let I'll defer to Damon and uh, uh, Rick on this, that the wind inserts uh, work well, and I'll be then the first to say that um, I'm the newest to the board. The uh, Damon and Rick have been working hard on updating our design guidelines, and I now understand we're accepting aluminum clad exterior wood interior. Windows. With that, I will uh, suggest that you might want to consider those. I think they might be cheaper, um, and uh, that uh, I don't we, think we I want to see a composite. I don't think I want to see a composite window. Um, okay. We uh, actually have in, in there if if at all uh, if it it is not going to change uh, the digit of the uh, expense by a zero. So yeah. Uh, so we have looked at uh, aluminum clad uh, wood window. The price is a minimum 50% more and depending on companies and whatever can even be double the cost. They are significantly more expensive. And that is, that is actually, frankly, that's a concern. There's no question at all about that. Uh, and uh, I guess the way we are looking at this is um, we're not, the goal here is not just a price issue, okay? Although we have to take that into consideration. But um, when you look at these windows, if you're two feet away, you can probably tell they're a composite material if you sort of know that. If you're 10 feet away, you can't tell any difference from wood. They look about the same. So at, at a distance, appearance-wise, it, it doesn't make any difference. At least that's that's our opinion as we look at it. Yeah, I guess I'll speak up. This is Damon. Um, I mean, I, I think our design guidelines disallow the use of the material you're requesting. Uh, I'll let Rick tell me if I'm wrong. But um, I think we would push you towards wood or, as Jim was talking about, the aluminum clad wood, which we now allow. And I recognize all the concerns that you've described, but I think that's the reality of replacing windows in this neighborhood. Um, I am curious, just from my own understanding, I think in your write-up you say 27 of the windows are original and 17 are from a later renovation. Right, 27 would be on floor one and two, and then the upper floor actually has 17. Gotcha. And the so the upper floor windows were replaced in 2008? Uh, yes. So they are uh, in much better shape, obviously. They also are single pane. And so they're not as as good, obviously, as double pane, uh, obviously, for uh, for energy efficiency. But they yeah. are they are newer windows. Those those are not the ones that there's trouble with opening and closing. Yeah. Uh, the reason I was asking is I was wondering if those were wood frame windows, and it sounds like they are. They are. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I know that we're, it's not our job to solve your problem, but something you might consider is a hybrid of what Jim was describing. You might be able to replace just the sashes on the newer windows with double pane sashes and do aluminum clad wood windows in the originals or something like that. Because I recognize the cost concerns you're raising, and you know, I, you know, we all kind of deal with these things, and it's not insignificant. But I think this board would try to push you towards wood frame windows uh, with the potential use of aluminum clad. And and by the way, I think I'm supposed to mention that the aluminum clad wood windows, I think we approve on a case by case basis. So I think we'd want to see more detail on what you're 
proposing before we approved it. So this is so red. When, so the comment that you made about uh, just replacing the panes, I guess I'm not. No, no. You're, just, you're talking about just the window itself comes out? No, Jim was talking about they make inserts. I think they're essentially yeah. replacement sashes. And so you potentially for the the upper floor windows that were replaced, whatever it is, 16 years ago, if the frames are in good place and it's in a, just an, an efficiency concern, there may be things you could consider such as just replacing the sashes with um, double pane sashes made out of wood or they may make aluminum clad ones. Hmm. And I'm just bringing that up because I think we're gonna push you towards wooden windows, um, which is going to increase your cost as you were pointing out. So when I, so I've obviously had numerous companies come out and take a look at these. No one has mentioned that as a potential option. And so I'm not even sure exactly Yes, sir. No. All right. Um, uh, Lowe's uh, sells these things. They are. Uh, who does? Who does? I'm sorry. Lowe's. Oh. Not Home Depot. Yeah. I don't shop at Home Depot. I shop at Lowe's for political reasons, and I won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's on the record. Um, yeah. It is on the it's record. On the record, yeah. and I don't. I'm not ashamed of that. So, but they are, they're, they're wood sashes and they, um, what you do is you, uh, you fill up the, uh, channels where your weights and your, yeah. uh, for your windows, right. for, uh, expanding foam, you put these, uh, little inserts in that allow for the windows to then be allowed to go up and down. And then you put these brand new wooden sashes inside and out, and you can have them painted to your color inside these, these uh, uh, um, plastic inserts that you put in there. And the plastic inserts can't be seen by anyone uh, outside of that. And it's, it's, uh, uh, it's not all that less expensive. I mean, it's, it's not cheap, but it is a way to uh, do so without having to uh, deal with anything on the interior and the exterior. And then finally, I want to note that we did have a neighbor uh, who has, uh, oh, you guys who are more architecturally astute than I, has crank windows and stuff. And he's now got a refrigerated home, so he's never opening his windows. But he went to a company in Portland called Indio. And Indio will uh, provide you a, a window uh, that you could put on the inside of your window sash that essentially gives you a double pane window and all the e-glass benefits and whatnot. And it just slips right in. You have no cost, anything like that. And if you want to know more about that, that's your neighbor, Carl Zimmerman up on the north, Sadia. And he is extraordinarily happy with that particular product. And that doesn't need a review because it's all interior. It doesn't, it doesn't need anything... The material is acrylic. It's not glass, but you know, again, it's on the interior. It doesn't involve us, but he is uh, pleasantly uh, um, surprised at how well it's worked for him. He's he, he says energy bill dropped um, by half by putting those things in. So, so I don't know what your goal is. If you you know if you want to maintain historicity. Um, that's fine, but and I, and maybe I'm speaking out of school. Jody's actually shown her face here on the screen, so I may be speaking out of school. So I be, probably ought to shut up and uh, let others. Um, you're you're not. Face. No, <laughs> you're not. You're not speaking out of turn. Um, to I just want to to further elaborate. So the the inserts that Jim is talking about, they're called storm windows. Um, you don't see. You don't see them a lot here, but they're actually used a lot on the East Coast. The, the, no, no. It's... I'm sorry, Jody. These are not storm windows. These are replacement sashes for the sashes that you have in your window. No, 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 no. Don't the you... secondary thing that you were talking oh, about. Oh, but they're the on the inside. Secondary thing is storm yeah. windows. Yeah, yeah you I'm can sorry. have storms. You can have storms on the interior or the exterior. They actually have storms that are removable. Um, so they're not a permanent feature. So that like if you want to <laughs> open your window, then you can just put your storm aside, but it does create a dual pane. 
Um, the inserts, Don, so you understand when you're looking at the sash is the the operable parts. It's this part up here and it's right. this part down here. And so essentially what's happening right now is you have weights and pulleys that are in right. the wall. Sure. And so those go away and mm -hmm. it becomes a friction-based system. So the plastic inserts that are going there, that's just friction-based. So it stays up or stays down or whatever um, that you breaks, whatever. Um, but that's, that's what he's, he's talking about. I mean, right. there are companies that are going to do it, but the guys who come out to look at your windows, they're going to, they're selling you windows. Sure. So they're sure, going to like auntie yeah. and sell you whatever the utmost that they can. And if it's a, if it's just the sashes they're selling, they're a little bit cheaper. So, you know, why even bring that up? Because that's not as much money in their pocket. Um, but you, the other question that I have, and I want you to elaborate on a little bit, cause you didn't during your presentation. And the reason I'm showing this one is these are casement windows up here, um, in your enclosed porch or whatever it is. Yeah. They're divided light right now. So these are like individual panes of glass. So right. If these are true divided light, are you, how are you going to treat those if these are proposed for replacements? Are you going to have a grill on the outside of the pane and in between the dual panes of glass, which is still a simulated divided light, but it mimics a true divided light a lot better versus just <laughs> having the grill in between the glass, which looks, well, looks terrible. It's terrible yeah. looking. So, so those are probably, those are up on the third floor where the attic was. Those are probably the worst windows in the, in the house. Well, they're not the worst, but they're not very good at all. So I'm not exactly sure. Those almost have to be back to some of the original design. I'm I'm positive no one would have put those in in 2008 when they renovated because the rest of the third floor is a completely different nice wood window. Uh, so what we were proposing is that we would make all the windows look the same. So we would not do this. So is there a requirement? Mm -hmm. And, and so this little piece that sticks out here, there's three sides, okay? There's two windows. This is the south side. There's two on the north, and there's three on the west. Uh, what, what I was thinking is that we would just make them all look the same as the rest of the house instead of uh, having that separate. But that's you mean like allowed. a double double hung windows yeah, up in yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have to tell you, I didn't realize you were going to do that. I would have concerns about you doing that without documentation to show that those were double hung. Yeah. Um, it's not uncommon if that was like a sleeping porch or something like that, that those would have been casements. Right. Um, they, they would have, you know, it's full max. I mean, the point of having a sleeping porch is bringing the cool air in. And so you want maximum opening. So okay. it's not uncommon to see a, a casement window on a, a sleeping porch. So I would have concerns about you making those double hung, unless you have photo documentation, historic photo documentation to show that those were double hung, then I would be all supportive. Yeah. And so I don't know how we can get old documentation on that unless there's some, some information. In some Another way. alternative, Don, and you know, Jody will correct me if I'm wrong, is if that area up there was built as an addition much, much later than the building and you have documentation of that, um, that's helpful as well. I mean, the steel casement windows, which is what those are. Yeah. Are those steel? Yeah, those are steel casement. I'll bet they're steel casement windows. Yeah. I've seen those things with my own naked eye. Um, so I'm betting those are 1950s. Uh, could be wrong, uh, but... Um, and they could be aluminum. They could be later than that. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what they are, but to, to all of our points is barring anything else, unless you can show that it's not part of the, um, those windows are not part of the original design of the house, then we have a hard time saying we well, can change it. Okay. Um, back to your research question. Uh, sorry. Uh, you can go to the um, archives, the Arizona Historical Society archives, 
They're over on second. They have funny hours. Um, so you want to look it up on the website, but you make an appointment and they will help you pull pictures. Um, it's a little bit of a needle in a haystack, but should you actually score <laughs> with a photo, it's like the best feeling. Okay, so let me just so I understand this. So what you're what you're saying is that if those were there originally when the house was built in 1915, we would have to keep that type of style. But well, if, if, they that, were, if, if what you just said is true, then yes, you would. Okay, but if they were built or if they were put in at a later date, then they could be changed. I got, uh, I, I guess what I was, so, you know, not having done any of this before, obviously, um, I guess I was making the assumption that it makes more sense when we do this kind of thing, uh, as we replace the windows, that they would all look the same instead of having a few sticking out on the edge there that look differently. But there's, I mean, there's kind of two things to think about, uh, Don, on, on that note. One is that Certainly, if they were, if the if the house was originally built with that particular style of window, then you, you know, are, are obligated. To, to, we're all obligated to say, well, that's what the architect intended, and you, you need to keep that. Um, and if if you have, as Jody was saying, if you can go find photographic evidence that says no, it wasn't that way; it was something else. Um, you know, that's important. If it was built later as an addition, much later, outside of the you know period of significance. Um, there's also a desire um, that that addition be visually distinct from the original house. Um, so, which it is now. Um, so it's kind of a without any evidence of what it was one way or the other because uh, because you, you kind of want to additions made to historic homes should look a little bit different than the original historic home so that you could see well that's the historic part and this is some contemporary thing that was done later for you know good purposes uh but it it, it it's distinct um and, and there may be some in between part, but but unfortunately, I break this second today. It's hard for us to know because uh, there's not enough information about when those windows were put in, for what reason were they put in. I, right. I think I heard the whole third floor might have been an addition done, you know, relatively contemporarily, um, which would drive us to, to kind of want to keep it distinct, um, which would be a casement window, which also could be a double hung or not double hung, uh, double pane uh, uh -huh. for, for your energy efficiency use. So all of the other windows on the third floor are, are uh, you know, they're not like, they're not the casement windows. They're just, yeah. they're just regular small windows. They sort of look like these that are on the side here. Right. It, it could be, it could be, for example, uh, let, let's just kind of look at this one photograph that's up right now. Uh, some of these homes, uh, when originally built, had um, windows in what would have been the attic at the time that are there for ventilation. And so that those two windows that are on the third floor right now may very well have been what the original design was back in you know 1915 or whenever that was. Uh, but that might not have been a functional room up there. It might have been attics. My, my house has function had when I started working on it, functional windows in the attic that looked like windows. They opened and everything, but they it was an attic. And somebody might have added at some point living space up there and added those windows that you're talking about on the uh, on the other side, the other elevation that you showed us. Uh -huh. But from from what we're seeing, we don't we don't we don't know. Um, right. And that whole dormer for that matter could have been an addition. Could be. Yeah. I, the other I, thing I guess I want to come back to on going back to your presentation, um, cause I just want to make sure I understand wh what you're proposing for the other windows. And I don't disagree with anything Jim or Damon brought up about maybe some other alternatives. Um, these windows that you were proposing to put in, these Imperva windows from Pella, um, yeah. you said they're composite. Yeah, there you go. 
Um, am I looking, if you just stick on one for just a moment, maybe not that one. Um, are they, go back to the one you were just at. Is that a composite material I'm looking at or is it an aluminum clad with composite underneath? No, no, that is a composite material. Mm. Um, they had that actual window at uh, at the store and I took that picture. So you're proposing that what would be exposed to the elements would be a composite material. Right, so if you, this is not a good example, actually, this is not as good as some of the others. Uh, but it would be, yes, a composite material exposed to the elements. Yeah. That is a very, um, let's see if she's opening that up here, see what it says. Shows. Yeah, some of those are like um, the one on the right hand side there. That is, you would, the edge all the way to the right hand side, that actually you would probably not see, or maybe only a little bit of it. You mainly would only see. Uh, the slider itself with the little frame around that. The one on the left, is, there wouldn't be any windows like that. Those are have a real wide, like, I don't know, couple inch uh, material around the edge of them. And so those don't look as nice as the others. Yeah. So the one on the right is almost exactly what it would look like. So I think, well, a couple things. Um, you're showing, well, that, okay. That looks like an aluminum window, honestly. Uh, so, so, so what we would like to see okay. in situations like this is not pictures of examples of what you might do, but actual spec sheets with dimensions of what you want to do for each individual window. So you have 44 windows. That's 44. I mean, they, you may have a whole bunch that are all the same size for all I know. I don't know. We do. It's 10, it's 10 different sizes out of the 40. So you have 10 different windows that you're proposing to put in. And um, we're talking kind of, in my view, generalities about what you're doing. I mean, I, I, I think you're hearing the board say we're not comfortable with that particular material composite being exposed to the elements, uh, especially since we don't have spec sheets or anything on it. We don't really know even what we're talking about we have well, this would be the, i'm sorry this would be the spec sheet here that's okay, that's the well, key yeah okay so, so these sorry to interrupt rick these yeah. were all included so i had him do a um a, a, to the best of his ability he did a um kind of elevation okay for for each side and okay. he labeled it and then the label, like it, like how these are like E, E, G, B. If you go down here, he labeled them so that you know which okay. one's A, B. All so right. he does, he does have spec sheets. This was, this was labor intensive for me and Don going back and forth to get this. So he definitely has this. Okay, got it. Yeah, the, the this type of replacement plan is what we would expect to see. Yeah, this just wasn't something I saw in the presentation. And I apologize if this was in the package. I did not see this, and I'm sure that's my fault. It's it was in the package, yeah. It's just yeah. you got to scroll down for a bit because it's kind of long. <clears throat> yeah, I think the problem we have is just that it's the material that we wouldn't approve. So we went straight into trying to solve your problem for you. <laughs> well, I certainly am open to suggestions because um, – I'm, I'm glad to look at uh, different types of things. Um, I'm, I'm not too keen on the idea of just adding sort of another window inside, sort of as an inside storm window. Right. Um, I would much rather uh, look at the ones where there would be, if I understand right, as you take the old window out, there'd be sort of a plastic insert and then there'd be wood windows that would fit within that insert if I'm understanding that correctly. And I can certainly go on and try to get information specifically about that. Those, you know, that that, that would be, yeah, that would be fine. Um, that, I, I probably would not be able to replace these with just the wood uh, because of cost, because of the 
the amount of money. This is not for me personally also, okay? I'm sort of a, the project person that sort of is, is to help uh, the owner uh, work through some of this stuff. But I don't believe there would be money available to replace all of them with. So that's why I have to try to come up with another option here. Okay, so Don, if I could ask you to just hold for a minute, Jim. See, uh, did I mute myself? No, I'm not. So if I could share a screen, um, I'll show you uh, what could be done with just sashes. Okay. Hold on <clears throat> just a second and let me make you a co-host so you can share, yeah, Jim. I understand. And then secondly, yeah, uh, you have a neighbor, you have a neighbor to your north who's a really friendly guy, um, Carl Zimmerman, if you haven't met him already. He is the one who uh, turned me on to the Indio product that I spoke of. Uh -huh. And he he sings its praises. And I'll tell you, he's got a highbrow house. He's not someone who's going to go on the cheap. He's doing something that's going to work for him uh, the best. And I've seen the product and you don't see the product because it's almost invisible. You don't mm -hmm. even know that it's there. And if you're going to have refrigeration and windows are not going to be opened, this is a viable option for you. So, but if I can share a screen now. Yep. You're good to go. Uh, let's see. How do I do it? Oop, oop, oop. There's a little down at the bottom. It's you're green. Right. I'm uh, clicking on it. I'm, I have, let's see. I'm trying to get, no, that's not it. That's not it. Huh. Hang on. It's, I got, I have a, <laughs> I, I find a way to open more windows on my computer that I don't know are open and uh, finally can understand. So we'll see. Oh, I'm not there yet. Anyway, it shows the, uh, almost there. Stand by. Let me get rid of this. So I'm going to try to share. So I'm going to share a screen. There we go. There it is. So there it is. So you're you're just taking out you're you're pounding in the pulleys at the top. Um, you're filling the the void space where the weights used to go up and down and you're putting uh -huh. in these inserts on each side and you know again they're they're wood colored and then you, right. you apply these sashes that then slip right in like magic i mean it's um it's a way to, you would save a lot of money especially right. as i know you have volunteer labor these guys would figure it out and they would get they would be able to mash these things in and no problem and you don't have to have the multi-pane windows you can order whatever you know, a single pane window, right. of course. Um, what, I, are the, what are those? I put them in. I put them in on my property where I didn't have to go through historic view. They are double pane, you, whatever e glass you want, and they still slide up and down. Um, they're great. That is, this is not the Indio product that I'm talking about. Right. This is something you could do and leave all the woodwork on the inside and on the outside alone. The uh, if you can, if my screen is showing my arrow, is you're right. putting these little uh, plastic inserts on either side right. that you you can again they may I don't know if they have have aluminum clad outside um, or not, but they come pre primed. You can paint them to whatever color you're going to paint them. They are probably the least impactful way to upgrade your windows, and in fact, probably do so better than. Um, in some respects, because you're you're not disturbing things. Um, if everyone wanted to right. go back to it, they're great. Run into me in the alley. I think uh, Tom and any number of folks on your crew have my number. I'd be happy to show you what they look like at my house. Okay, that would be that would be uh, great. Uh, I um, mean, they're not. They don't save you that much. Um, they don't. They what? I'm do sorry. Save you a lot of dust and, uh, and headache, and I think. Uh, since they're wood on both sides, um, if you were to bring them before us, there's something that we can't deny. So, but okay. I can't speak for the rest of the board. So yeah. maybe the rest of the board should speak up, and say whether I'm sending them down a rat hole or not. So, 
And with that, I'm going to uh, mute myself. Yeah, no, there, there are wood sash replacements, so we would accept them because they're a material we approve of. I think we would ask that you try to match the original character of each window. So if they were divided glass in the past, right. we would probably ask you to stick with divided glass. If they weren't, we'd probably ask you to not. But I think this is something that we would approve because it's a it's a material. It's a that, material that's already in the guidelines. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. No, no exceptions required. Right. So the only the only windows are yeah the only windows that are different uh, are those steel casement up there on that third floor where it, where it sticks out, and so um, yeah so I guess I'll just have to do some more research on that and figure out whether that's that's original. I mean we have I mean I assume well I don't know I shouldn't assume anything I don't know we have to figure out what we can do there I don't know right. But at least I think to tell you, know, you what, go ahead, Jamie. I, I, I was going to say to tell you what we would accept. And Rick walked through, you know, trying to figure out what the original character of that window was in terms of divided glass or not. So we would ask you to make an argument of why it looks the way it looks. But in terms of what we would accept, we would accept either wood casement windows, steel casement windows. Any of that would be acceptable. Right. And if they're steel casement right now, and you replace them with Double pane steel casement, that would be okay. fine. Yeah. And I, I just want to say that I've had to replace uh, a casement window, and I was able to go and buy a double pane window that right. was kind of sealed and all, and I put it in with normal glazing. It was kind right. of trippy. It yeah. was just like I was buying a piece of glass, except it didn't it okay. cost only 10 times as much, but I could actually right. replace each pane and got my benefits of the e glass and the, and the, right. uh, Right, right. Uh, insulation. So. Yeah. Well, that that that's uh yeah that's very helpful to to know that. Okay. Right. And just I have to make one last uh, comment. I, I just I love what you're doing there, and I love what uh, is going to be happening at, at that home. It's got a great history of uh, uh of being a good uh, do good house, and I hope it uh, gets to continue to do that. So. Yeah, I think that's what the plan is, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, uh, this is this is sort of the uh, the last. It's it's a major project, obviously, to do this. But uh, what we want to do is uh, is you know get what is acceptable there, and so I will. I'll do a lot more research on this and go back. It's helpful to have some ideas of different ways that this can be done. And um, then hopefully I can bring that back to you very shortly. That'd be great. And Jim and, and maybe Damon, you looked it up too real time. I'm just looking at this gelled wind window that Jim had brought up. It says clad wood, which to me, oh. is, it, is it wood on the outside or is it aluminum on the outside? Oh, you might be right. It does say cloud wood. The ones I've yeah. installed have been uh, wood. And but I uh, you the outside called up and just said clad wood. So I, I guess, Don, what I'm saying, if it's true, and we're not going to solve this in this meeting, nor should we, is that if it's clad wood, we would also approve that because clad wood windows are okay. And if your concern or your or your your the owner is concerned about wood exterior. We have uh, included in our guidelines okay, okay being okay with a with a metal clad wood sure. from the outside. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of uh, of going and uh, finding out um, exactly what's available, but um, uh, it looks to me the the ones that. The one that's the most attractive to me, to me with what we're talking about is this Jeldwin window uh, Jim has been talking about. That that I think would be very acceptable uh, also to us. Yeah. Yeah. And since he's got experience, albeit maybe with wood exterior. All, yeah. Back in the day, I had to do, when I did my house, I had to do all wood all the way around. We weren't right. accepted clad um, and I appreciate the maintenance issues that that brings along, but that's what we had to do. Right. Um, so if you can get clad, I mean, I appreciate that's better. Okay. okay. Um, I, you know, to, to wrap then, um, 
I wonder for the board, um, it seems like maybe rather than an up or down vote, we just say that there should be a continuance perhaps. Yeah, I agree. Let's be uh, pushed down to a minor review. This is not going to be a minor review. I mean, okay. Jody can correct me, but this is a this is a full review. Um, and if it was one window, it would be a minor review or two. But windows. the scale but... of this, the scope <laughs> of this. If it, were one, if it were one window, I probably would have just tried to slide it in there someplace. <laughs> okay, well, that's probably <laughs> yeah. not something we want to get into a discussion about. Here. No, 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 I don't. Uh, I don't. This uh, is way, way past that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I, I, no, I no. think given the scale of what you're trying to do right. and the significance, this needs to be a, we need, we need, and, and rather than just say no to what you're proposing, what I suggest is you take all the things that you heard from us and that we do what we call a continuance and right. get on the agenda in the future when you're ready. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I, and if I understand all this correctly, everything that's been submitted would be, I guess, resubmitted back with the new windows. Yeah. It's an update about that we've already windows. done. The yeah. administrative work on that, I'm, I, Jody's more familiar with that than I, but rather than just, have a no, which means you have to start over again. Why don't we just say um, you've got some homework you got to go do, and do that, and then you know work with 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 the city with Jody and and see when you can get back on the agenda. Yeah, well, I appreciate that, and Jody's been very helpful as we were as we we're working through all this. Yeah. Okay. Um. So can I offer one one last inquiry with respect to that? I think Rick, what you're proposing then would have he get to avoid some extra fees. I think so. Okay. Unless Jody disagree with me, but I think a continuance is just come back later. Yeah, continue. You guys have done continuances before. Right. It's just come back later. Yeah. So he's yeah. just going to revise his plans and yeah, right. come back. So he's not going to have to pay another. Re That's I'm trying to avoid. Or... I'm trying to avoid a do-over. If we just say. Yes. Enough, right. No, uh, well, yeah, I'm kind of, uh, these are on, uh, is a, a issue with me right now. So okay. that's separate. Well, I'm not trying to get you started. Yes, on sorry. You. I'm sorry. No, if, uh, if you go your route, Jim, of a minor review, then there would be additional fees. So it's a whole, that's a whole different pro and, and, and in any case, I mean, just to be clear, this would not make the cut for a minor review. Correct. Uh, so you do have to have somebody make a motion, though. Okay. This is Damon. I motion for continuance. Uh, this is Jim Glock. I vote for uh, a second the continuance. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have unanimous consent. All right. Okay, Don. I mean, good, a good discussion. And I, th I think maybe you got some good ideas here that'll, yeah. that'll be yeah. This is, this is very helpful. It's, it's, um, when you start these things and don't know exactly, you know, what all you can do and can't do and should do and shouldn't do, this is very helpful to get this information. And okay, so, good. yes, I will, I will pull this together and hopefully, uh, Get back on the agenda before too long. Okay. In the future, if you're doing this for another client, um, you do have an option. Just because I don't think you're familiar with the process of just doing a what's called a courtesy review, where we just have a, you know, you come up and say, "I'm thinking about this," uh -huh. have a conversation, not unlike what you just had, right? Um, you know, before you go too far down the uh, the right. planning. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. All right. It's a storied home. We look forward to it uh, being activated again, and and, yeah. and its purposes are just so righteous. It's great. So great. thank you, Don, yeah. for what you're doing. Yeah. Hope thank you're you. going to have chickens in the front yard. They, you know, they just put them in about a week ago, so there are chickens there. Yeah. Right. But, no, but no goats. <laughs> I don't. I don't hope they wouldn't do no goats. I have. I don't think so. We like the goats. I <laughs> like the goats. My dogs <laughs> like the goats, but that's okay. All right. Thank you very All right. much. Thank have a you. nice night. Okay.
Is item number four, item number five, design guidelines process discussion. That sounds like Jody talking. Uh, uh, yes. So we um, are putting together, and I think I had mentioned this to you, Rick, we are putting together a process, a, a process so it's outlined for everybody because now all of the advisory boards are wanting with the exception of El Presidio, are wanting to um, do an update to their design guidelines. Um, okay. So the the way that it's it's shaking out right now is there would be your review, um, and depending on how substantial the revisions were to the design guidelines there could potentially be notification to the neighborhood, like a mailing, so everybody's aware. Um, yours may not be that way because you've already done the heavy lift um, mm -hmm. and and the re and the revisions that you tend to do are pretty minor. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we don't have to go the full About, month on this. Yeah, a sub substantial addition, but um, it would go um, still to PRS, they would review, it would go to potentially CDRC for their review and comment, and then it would go to um, the director of PDSD, and then it would get forwarded to the, um, what's the word I'm looking for, city manager, and then the city manager can opt to approve it or send it to mayor and council. So in brief, that's the direction that we're looking at right now. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, yours are a lot minor. Yeah. After, I'm sorry, after PRS, who who did you say they would go to? CDRC. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's the- Community uh, Design Relations Committee. Oh, thank you, Jim. <laughs> Those acronyms, man, they're just everywhere. No, I- I strove in my bureaucratic life to never use them. <laughs> okay, well, I, I didn't write those down, so say it again. Community De Design Relations Committee. I've never heard of them. Oh, yeah. They're like a hidden little animal that has been around for decades. Okay. Anyway, am I sharing my screen? You are. All right, so this is what Rec just sent. This, I mean, you look at what all uh, we've been doing, Damon and Rick, and I know my bar, my spouse may have even weighed in on this. It's it's really really minor stuff. So, yeah, I we walked through it. I was with you guys when you were yeah, doing Jim, some of the. Already is part of the whole process. And no. Uh, so for 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 your benefit, Jim, and I think Damon knows this. Um, uh, the the other HPZs are making what you would consider to be significant changes to their design guidelines to somewhat model the level of detail we have in ours. Ours, I think, are the largest by far. And so I, I could see where theirs are going to have to require a lot more review and maybe even na neighborhood notification, I guess. Uh, but we're changing, we're doing a bunch of nuanced things by comparison. So I kind of hope this this doesn't have to go through neighborhood review, and I hope it doesn't have to go through a mayor and council approval either. That the city manager would just say this is fine. But I but I do appreciate that there should be a process, and where those decisions need to be made, they need to be identified, and then in our case, that might go uh, quickly. But are we um, kind of waiting for that process to be? Um, fully vetted before we start going with our red lines on ours? What's our, what, what's your thoughts, Jody? on? My thoughts are, I'd have to get back to you on that. Um, I'm not necessarily the one driving that. So, um, because we have gotten way in from the zoning administrator and the city attorney's office on this process too. But let me get back to you on that, um, given given where you're at. I mean, you've already had your notice meetings and everything like that. And like I said, you're at a different place than 
the other advisory boards because they are two pages right now where you guys are, you know, 40 strong. 61. I'm scrolling through page 60 right now. Yeah, yeah, 61 pages. Well, Thank there's... you, Rick. And, Dar and, you know, we can get Darcy and others uh, who are uh, participating in this to, to step up who are no longer on the board. And uh, I'm sure... Uh, support. I don't know that it needs to come to that. I mean, I, I think, you know, I'm happy to talk to the, the PRS myself and, you know, Jim, I know you volunteered to be in the meeting as well. Um, this is relatively easy, I think, compared to the other ones to, 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 to walk, walk through if it comes to that. When we go into things like neighborhood notifications, as Jody mentioned, that, t that just is a timeline that I'm trying to like, hope we don't have to go through for this particular it and that's something we're still talking about internally about neighborhood notification, um, because, you know, for Fort Lowell, maybe it's not as expensive, but for like you guys, West University, that's a that's a big cost to the city. Mm -hmm. So we're just we're figuring it out. Um, but as you well know, you know, not everybody looks up your agendas. I mean, I do, but that's because I write them and you do. That's because you're on the board. But like your average Joe Schmo out there who lives in the district, who's going to be impacted, they don't look at the, the, you know, agendas to see what's going on to understand, you know, that there's going to be a change to the design guidelines. Hence the idea of the neighborhood notification so that they understand because it does impact their property. It does impact the changes that they can make to their property potentially. So you know, I'll get back to you on yours. Sorry, I'm Okay. Um, and then at, once we get that figured out, then we'll get you on to an agenda. But um, I know that you sent this out as an email to everybody and, and you so nicely I want to tell you how much I appreciate the do not respond, do not reply all comment in your email. Um, but um, if you could let me know that everybody's on the same page, that this is your final product that you want to go forward with and, and everybody's agreeable to that, because I did see that email, um, mm -hmm. then I'll start working with that. Yeah, I kind of am stalling a little bit and only a little bit because I really want to make sure, um, you know, Sarah and Rachel um are kind of a little behind the power curve because they've been out a little. So, you know, I'd like to get their voices because they were part of the process. Yeah. Um, but that's as much as I want to stall it. Um, okay. Yeah. Just let me know what you yeah. hear from that. Okay. And, and you know, Damon, well, has I, to... go ahead, Damon. I was just going to say, I mean, I don't think the dra that draft is sort of like ready for submittal because there's still a bunch of unadjudicated comments in it. Yeah. So I think as... And I'm hesitating to say this because I think you're going to tell me to do it, but I think one of you retired guys should uh, go through and be the single voice editor and like adjudicate all the comments. I I think so too. I, I, I do know when I sent it to you guys, I may even men mention the email that I haven't, I need to go through it myself because I remember there are some, un, to your point, unadjudicated comments in there. That I we do need. think it's, I do think it's helpful to see the changes though. So when PRS is looking at it to understand what you changed. Just, no, I understand, you know, but, it, but what Damon's saying is there's some stuff in there that we never really finished the exact language of and we need, yeah. to, need to do that. And so one of us retired guys <laughs> uh, <laughs> could do that. Um, and that's that's okay because you know, like I said, I, I need Rachel and Sarah to kind of take a look at it too, and then just kind of wrap around and then finish it. And it's not quite finished, but I I I, I think at the stage that it's in right now, we're very close, and that's why I'd like to kind of understand the process because I think within a, a very short period of time, perhaps even before we meet again, we could say this is a finished product from our point of view. And then, you know, to your point of view, Jody, then, you know, where does it go? Where does it go next? Okay. I'll keep this on the agenda then. Right. For next month. Um, and then we can have that discussion. Hopefully Rachel and Sarah will be present. Yeah. They'll both, I believe they're both going to be able to be on board uh, next month. 
Okay. The the they are they they've taken their oath of office. No, it wasn't that. Uh, but if, if one was out of country and one oh. was had a conflict of some kind, so and they both said they weren't going to be at this meeting. Okay. All right. Um, and Lou, did you have your hand up? No, he's off. He's on mute. Okay. No, I I did, but I think the question was more. Uh, super tactical about, you know, the overall view of the review of the guidelines, you know, against the Arizona Historic Society, but this is only Tucson and our HPZ specific. I'll, I'll catch you up offline on the yep. process that we've gone through to get here so we don't take any Yeah, more. I started reading back through those notes that she alluded to that nobody reads. Um, and I will say that thank you for the YouTube videos of these meetings. <laughs> I've enjoyed them. Oh, <laughs> good. I'm glad someone does. I better be careful. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You should. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think I'm going to kind of wrap item five. Um, one of us retired guys is going to go through and take care of all the uneducated notes. And we'll set a goal for the next, by the next meeting, uh, Jody, if you could, if by the next meeting we snap a chalk line and say we're, we're, we are done, then where does this go? Okay. All right. Okay. So that's it for five. Item six, staff updates. Jody, are there any staff updates? Uh, Michael is back. Oh. He was, yeah, he was only gone for six weeks. Uh, um, but he is back as of today uh, and attending Armory Park. So should you have questions or whatever, you can now also direct them to Michael. I'm sure you're happy. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm happy. It's been uh, busy. Uh, <laughs> and then we did have, we've had some minor reviews. Uh, we had one last week for a roof in, um, in uh, your district. And then the uh, capstone project is moving forward. Um, they will likely be coming back for some stuff related to the relocation to the new lots uh, more on the interior of uh, West University. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, breathing difficult. <laughs> Trying to help uh, you by ending the meeting early. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that kind of actually combines staff updates and future agenda items. Sorry. Right, okay. So the only thing you see on the horizon other than minor reviews is capstone. Uh, I think so. Yes. Okay. At this point. Okay. And capstones a lot. So that's, that's okay. All right. Um, so that's it, Jody, for items six and seven. Yes. All right. Any other one last things from the board or from Jody? Hearing none. Um, I believe we decide we did decide last week that we do not need to need to take a roll call vote on adjournment. So right. given that all the agenda items have been covered, we are adjourned at 7.05 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. See ya.